to pass before the face of Moses and God shows his goodness to our generation 
and to generations to come. So we glory in him for all he's done. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to put your hands together and celebrate the name of the Lord today. Give him a clap and praise him. And give him praise. Thank you, Lord. God is good all the time. He put his song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. the darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time help me say God is good he put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. I want you to sing that one more time. Say, God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. He put a song. To never leave you, nor forsake you. And his word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. Oh God. Still for us he chose to die Fill us with his Holy Spirit Now we can tend and testify That his love is everlasting And his mercy
church. Amen. Can you raise up your hands and tell God you're wonderful, you're gracious, you're mighty. This morning, want to tell God, receive all the praise, receive all the glory, receive all the honor. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord.
found out to cough on his ake. He deserve all the glory. He deserve all the honor. The name of Jesus, the strongest tower, the rushes run into and they are safe. Amen. I don't know where you are running to, but Jesus is there to help you. In times of trouble, he's there. When you feel like things are not working out, he's there for you. Amen. We worship you, Lord. We will lift our hands up unto the Lord. David says, I will lift my hands up. Where does my help come from? It comes from you, Lord. It comes from you, Father. It comes from you. We worship you, Lord.
bless your name this morning and we glorify you for your faithfulness for your loving kindness you're a faithful and wonderful God unastahili kuabudiwa unastahili kupewa sifa ndio maana tunasema wewe umetukuka thank you jesus amen 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 as we celebrate love today and as i see all of you in this sanctuary this morning we want to thank the lord for his faithfulness We thank God for the fact that he has brought all of us. And even today as people celebrate love, the love of God, we thank God that we are able to see this day. We thank God for giving us relationships. I want us still in that mood of prayer. We thank God for the marriages that we have. Let's thank the Lord for the children that we have. And let's thank God for our parents, our brothers, and our sisters. And for those who are courting, thank God for your partners or those who are in relationships. At the beginning of the, this week, the Lord has been putting a burden on my heart about forgiveness. And on this day, as much as we are celebrating love, to some this day is igniting a lot of bitterness. There are those of us who have been in abusive relationships. There are those whom the relationships just did not work some have gone through a lot of pain and even as i speak now there are some who could be among us and you're going through so much pain some have gone through rejection others have gone through divorce to a next end some people have fallen into depression some are going through mental illness and some even are suffering with low self esteem the bible reminds me in 1 corinthians chapter 12 verse 26 that if one part suffers then every part suffers with it 
and we as believers, if one of us is suffering, then we also suffer. God is love. And the reason why I'm standing here today and the choir as you sing is that I want us to pray for our families, to pray for our fellow believers who are going through pain, to pray for our brothers who we know, to pray for sisters, for friends, that the Lord may bring healing, that the Lord may bring restoration, that they may believe in love again, that on a particular day like this, as people are celebrating, they have a reason to thank God. Choir, if you can just sing. In church, I want his eyes closed. And we raise our hands up as you thank the Lord for your family and for your children. Remember those who are hurting, that the Lord may bring restoration, that the Lord may bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are one body.
relationship this day, oh God. Heal the hope that is dying, the children who are hurting, there are people involved in that family. We bring them to your throne of mercy this morning, oh God, because you are love. believe in you, oh God. We pray for restoration, oh God, and healing, oh God. And for the families that are working, oh God, we pray that you may help them to overflow with love in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Be there any person who is in a relationship and they are going through pain, oh God, I ask for forgiveness, oh God. I pray that, Lord, you may remove the bitterness in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Heal because you are love, oh God. Heal them in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how we walk out here. And to some people, oh my Father, they might seem everything is working well. But deep down their heart, they are suffering. I pray for healing in those homes right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are on the verge of giving up, I pray for restoration in those homes right now in the name of Jesus. May healing be your portion this day. May restoration be your portion this day. May the love of God overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, our friend. We know and we believe that when we are on in your house and we pray to you we know that Lord you do things and we know that Lord there is nothing impossible with you and so we just want to say thank you thank you Jesus thank you Lord for it's in Jesus name we do pray and give thanks amen and amen amen Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercy is endureth forever. You can have your seats. I felt in my heart, as I told you at the beginning of the week, that the Lord wants us to remember those who are hurting. And I thank God that we have prayed. And the Lord will heal. And pastor, you will get testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So at this time, without uh, taking much um, more time, allow me to welcome um, our pastor, Esther. I know she has lost her voice, but, you know, I can't just call pastor on, a, on such a day when you're here. So come so that you help me call pastor. <laughs> Let's give her a hand as she comes. Thank you. Yes, so thank you very much, Ma'am Esther. So <laughs> tears talk a kabisa kabisa. So with her permission, uh, we will pray for, for Reverend as he comes. So allow me just to pray. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you for this great family and we thank you for Pastor Elvis. And even as he comes to speak and he comes to share his word, your word on this day, we pray that you may anoint him and give him favor, oh God. For it's in Jesus' holy name we do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Church, let's just all say amen. <laughs> Mom, Esther, please don't go. Those flowers ain't mine. Somebody who cares when I found you, found. 
amazing person the most beautiful person is standing before me I'm very lucky to have you in my life happy Valentine's thank you very much praise the Lord Buana Asafiwa Sana Yes, we thank God because of this day. This is called the, the Valentine's Day. All over the world, people are celebrating love in different forms and different beliefs. And this day, I thank God because he has given us an opportunity to meet here in the house, his house. Maybe to discuss one or two things and think of how we can make life a little bit better. You see? I don't know. When was the first time you ever fell in love? When I, the first time I fell in love, I was in class four. <laughs> I mean, there was a girl who could not make me sleep in class four. And I could not be able to go tell her that I loved her. So I took me a paper and a pen and wrote her a letter and told her that I loved her. And the girl did not waste time. She responded back very quickly and she said she's not interested and suggested that I should talk to a certain girl. <laughs> well, Human beings love, they love, they love. When, if you're not married, maybe you see people, you love them. They say, the, the, the president of France saw his teacher and loved his teacher. But they are married today. People get into matatus, they see people, they love them. Sometimes, Young people come to church, they see young ladies here singing in the choir, and when we are lifting up our hands, we think they are lifting their hands also, but they're loving those girls, man. <laughs> Sometimes people, they see newscasters, you know, in the TV, and they love them. That happens a lot. Human beings love, they love, we love. And so that is why the world is celebrating love today because love is a very hot thing. We're ever loving. People love. The principles behind loving, you know, the love and the beliefs may be very different. But human beings love. Now, today people are loving one another all over the world. And that is not what we're going to talk about here. Many people are going to break the seventh commandment today. It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But many people are going to be committing adultery today. That is not what I am here to do. Actually, I am here to speak of how that should not be done. 
And you see, when people love one another, and they become very serious about it, they call witnesses, they call a pastor, witnesses, they walk down the aisle, and they call God, and they make vows to one another to stay together for life, loving one another. That's, that's the aspiration. When people are coming to the altar to exchange their vows, they are very serious. They want to love each other for life. They want to be in love the first decade, second decade, third decade, fourth decade. If God is still giving them life, fifth decade, sixth decade. People want to love each other for life. That's an aspiration. I mean, we want to be in love. I want to love my wife throughout my days. And I want her to love me back throughout my days. That's the goal of every person who is getting married. Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. Not always. We get to places and times when we begin to hear that love has died. You hear so and so's love has died. Someone goes to the wife and says, hey, my, my love for you has died. I had a teenager tell a father, it was in a movie, Oh, Dad, I know that your mom for dad, I know that your love for mom has died. Oh, sad day. It's a sad day. That love dies. Should love die? No. Love never dies. We're the ones who murder it. We kill it. Love should be like the starring character in a movie that does not die. But we kill it. We kill it. Let's read the Bible from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. First Corinthians 13, verse 4 and 5. This is what it says. I'm, read, I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, love is patient and kind. Does not envy or boast. It, does, it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Up to there. And so, love, sorry. Love should be blossomed. Love that does not just blossom, it does not, not just grow. Love needs to be blossomed. If it has to grow, it has to be blossomed. Otherwise, it will die. We will kill it. We've just read from the Bible, and the Bible says clearly that love is patient, and it's kind, and it does not insist on its own way, and it's not rude. So there's several things there. So I'm going to focus on about three things there only. Love is not rude. That's what the Bible says. Love is not rude. Love is not ill-mannered. That's what the Bible says. It's not ill-mannered. I don't know whether you heard the story of the man who married a young lady, and this young man didn't want to go work. It was in the West. So this guy <laughs> was just at home, mostly with a clicker in his hands, watching the TV. The whole day. And so, his father-in-law was paying for their rent. The mother-in-law was buying them food. The sister-in-law was buying them clothes. The auntie bought them a car. So the wife got exasperated. She got annoyed. 
and she went to the husband and she said, I am so ashamed. I'm ashamed that it is my father who pays rent here. And it is my own mother who buys us food. And it is my sister who is buying us clothes. And now my auntie has bought us a car. I am ashamed. And the husband was still rolling on the sofa with a clicker in his hands. He said, yes, you should be very ashamed because those two worthless brothers of yours have not given us a cent. That is rudeness reloaded. The guy won't work. <laughs> and the guy wants to be given all the time. Love cannot thrive in such an environment. Love is not rude. It is not rude. You see, we were taught common courtesies when we were growing up. But somehow some people never, never internalize these things. So they will never say sorry. Even when they make a mistake, they're at home. They can't say sorry. If someone cannot say sorry, it is rude. It is rude. If someone has been given something or the spouse has done something good, Someone should say thank you. If someone does not say thank you, that person is rude. And if someone does not say excuse me, that person is rude. The person is rude. You see, when we live together, when we live together, we should be courteous. We should be courteous. And you see, there are other times when we're getting, we are, there, there are new ways of getting rude nowadays. Love is not rude. That is what the Bible says. The new forms of getting rude. Of course, we're having dinner and someone is texting. This, it is rude. A couple is talking and arguing. But the other person cannot allow the other person to speak. He's just interrupting every time, interrupting, every time, interrupting, every time, interrupting, every time, interrupting. That person is rude. Love is not rude. Love is not rude at all. It is not rude. And you see, when we're living together, we should be a blessing to one another. That's what we should do, and that is what God calls us to do. So rudeness should not be a part of it. So if we don't do away with rudeness, then love cannot blossom. Love is not rude. That's what the Bible says. But then there is this manners, you know. When some men go to visit the small rooms in the houses, when they go inside there and they leave the toilet seat irrigated, you know, overhead irrigation. <laughs> and they leave. They just leave. So this house has a wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Women. Hallelujah. Toilet seats should not be left with any liquids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Women are not dryers. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone should take care of his own messes. Hallelujah. Really, really, really. Love is not rude. Kwa sababu wa kunanga kanjo kuja kwa nyumba za watu. Sini kweli. In, in, in an environment like that, love cannot blossom. We're talking about blossoming love. Love is not rude. Love is not rude. Love is polite. Love is well behaved. 
Love is courteous. It is not rude. That's what the Bible says. And even here in church this month, we're saying stronger together. We should not be rude to one another because love is not rude. It's not rude. Someone comes to a person, you see? You find a person, a person has not been married, a lady, and we're still asking, when are you going to get married? Ah. It is rude. Love is not rude. Eh? Or maybe someone. Kuna mama amekula vitu zake sawa sawa. Huh? And then tunaenda kuuliza. Wale amekula tu amenona. Na hataki kuulizwa kama amenona. Are you pregnant? Are you PG? Amenona. This is it's even worse if a man goes to ask her, are you pregnant? <laughs> Love is not rude. Oh, people go, ask, hey, umekonda sana, you are so skinny, ni nini mbaya? Love is not rude. How old are you? So the people going to other people and say, oh, how old are you? Love is not true. Some people don't want to be asked how old they are. This is some people ask, how old are you? Some people even ask, hey, how much money are you earning? Unalipangwa pesangapi? Love is not rude. Love is kind. Na hii wakati ya BBI na nini? Who are you going to be voting for? It's a personal decision, personal choice. If someone wants to tell you, fine. But don't ask. See, because the Bible says, love is not rude. So if we're going to have rude, rudeness around, we cannot, we cannot be able to have love. We cannot be able to be stronger together because we're going to be hurting one another. So if you are to be stronger together in the year 2021 in this place, then we have to be courteous. We have to be well-behaved. We have to be polite. The Bible says that love is not rude. So if you want to have a family that is going to be blossoming love for a long, long time, then rudeness has to be removed from the family. Paul also tells us something else. He says that love is patient. Love is patient. So we're talking about blossoming love. So if we want to blossom love, we have to be patient. We have to be patient. But you see, when we have, we have no patience in us, and we're at home, we're married to real people like me and you. When we're at home, there are times when we're going to be irritated. That's a fact of life. There are times when we're going to get mad. That's a fact of life. But when we don't have patience, one, we get angry very fast. Tunafura tu haraka sana. Now, if people are going to live in such an atmosphere where people cannot bear with other people's weaknesses and other people's shortcomings, then that love cannot blossom. Love blossoms in patience. In patience. In patience. You see, when you're not patient, you're going to judge people very fast very fast words rush to your mouth and you're going to judge people and sometimes when people do things to you you may want to retaliate you may want to hit back it's because of impatience you see we are married to human beings like us 
And these human beings have shortcomings like us. You have shortcomings and they have shortcomings. So we should accommodate one another. At least. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter number one. Can we go there? James chapter number one. Verse 19. It says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift or quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You see the progression? Let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Other versions say, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. You see? For some of us, it's the other way around for some people. It's slow to hear, quick to speak, quick to get angry. Can you show us the slide one uh, on impatience? The first one there. When people, when people are one, quick to speak and quick to get angry and very slow to hear. Okay, not not the pictures. That the people say here, these guys here, they are slow, slow to hear. Okay? They are slow, but very quick to speak and very quick to get angry. So if people are going to be here, 40%, 30%, 40%, there may be no family. Family should be like this. Show me the next one. It should be like this. We should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. If we're going to be there, this is how our families are going to look like. When we are not having words rushing to our mouths and we're not getting too quick to judge, we're going to be like that, slow, very quick to hear, very quick, very quick to hear. There are some people who know answers even before the question has been asked. Now, we should be quick to listen, but very slow, very, very slow to speak, and very, very slow to get angry. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them if they're married. Turn to your neighbor. Hey, you came on Zakov, Nisiku ya Valentine. Mwambia, Bible in Asema, you should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Very, very slow. And very, very slow to get angry. Yes. You see, in marriage, we need to compromise. Not always. But we need to accommodate each other, really. In marriage, there should be that. We should be forgiving. We have talked about, about that. In a family, we must be patient with one another. We must be forgiving. In a family, we must have grace. We must extend grace. Our spouses have weaknesses. We must be able to extend that grace to them. And they should be able to extend grace to us. And you see, we should be tolerant. 
to one another. We should be patient. We should be forbearing in families. That way love is going to blossom. Otherwise, in the absence of that, it won't be there. And we will not be together. You will not be able to have your spouse for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years if these elements are going to be lacking and if they're going to be missing. So we must embrace that lifestyle where we accommodate one another, where we compromise once in a while. Patience, patience, patience. You see, the Bible also tells us something else, that love is not self-centered. I mean, it does not seek its own. That's what the Bible says. Love does not seek its own. It does not focus on self. No. You must have heard the story of the man who worked very hard. This guy was working very hard, but he was a miser. And he was never giving the family money. And so a time come, came and he was about to die. And he called his wife. And he told him, honey, I want you to promise me something. That when I die, that you will get all my money and put it in my coffin. So that I can go with it to the afterlife. So this man made the wife to promise. And the wife promised. And she said, okay, I promise you. I will bury you with your money. And their best friend got to know about it. And when the man died, when they were going to bury him, they all went for the funeral. The best friend was there. Well, the people were there. The pastor was there. And when they were just about to commit the body to the ground, this widow stopped the service. And she said, excuse me, just before you commit the body to the ground, I want to put something in the casket. She had a box. So she came with a box. They opened the casket and she stuffed it inside the casket. And then it was locked and lowered into the ground. And when it was lowered, after the funeral, the best friend came and asked, you don't want to tell me that you buried this man with all the money. She said, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I promised. I promised. So this is what I did. I put all his money in my account and I wrote him a check and I put it in the coffin. So the man was full of himself. Very selfish. And sometimes we can be like that in families. If there is a lot of selfishness, love cannot thrive. Some people are like, show me a slide there. On selfishness? Uh-huh. That one there. You see that one? <laughs> the wife is always right. When you feel she's wrong, slap yourself and read rule number one again. It could also be the other way around. The next one. Or oh, the man is a boss, eh? <laughs> now, when people are interested in becoming bosses at home, and you have to make every decision, it's about you, everything is about you, love cannot thrive. It can't blossom there. It can't. It can't. Everything cannot just be about you, about you, about you. That I have to make this decision, and if it does not go my way, akuna kitwita endalea hapa. No. Things don't work like that. If you want love to thrive, that element of selfishness has to go. 
And some people are not interested in the hobbies of their spouses and the things they like and the interests they like, the things they like, the things they're interested in. Some people are not interested. Is it you know you Here na penda ball ni vitu yake. But you see, if he loves football and you go watch a game with him, if he loves Gormahia, and then you go watch a goal game with him or, or with her, that's an opportunity to blow some love, man. It, going to watch Gormahia may not be your thing. You may not even love goal, but you're there for him. And that is an opportunity to blow some love. If she loves to belt, you can be with her. Those are those are her interests. When you join her in baking, it's a time to blow some love. Being interested in what he likes or what she likes, you're going to be blossoming love. But if you stay away and you see the things I like, I don't like them, then you're losing an opportunity to grow your love. And you see, some people are very selfish. Very selfish. They come home, moody. They can't hug nobody, moody. Hi, hi, they go. Yo, Gianni, Gianni, what do you call Adina? Moody, moody. Kula, Quenda, Oga, or whatever, Lala. Kesho, moody, moody, moody. Can't hug no one, can't. Doesn't want to talk to people, no. They want their space. In a if you, kila wakati, kila wakati, kila wakati, kila wakati. You see, in an environment like that, where someone is so full of himself, say love cannot thrive. Hebrews. 13, 16. Hebrews 13, 16. Do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So love is not self-focused. Love is focuses on other people. You see, the hand of the person who is a born-again Christian should be open to people. The Christian should not focus on himself or herself. The Christian should love to share and to sacrifice because with this, God is pleased. Christianity is about generosity, being kind to people, being good to all the people, and not being good to all the people out there except your spouse at home. There are people who are very good to people out there, but when they come home, they are very mean. No. Christianity is about other people. Jesus went everywhere doing good. He didn't come to be served. Acts chapter 10, 38, Jesus did not come to be served. Jesus went everywhere doing good, touching people, just doing good everywhere, all over. And we are supposed to be doing good all over, starting with our homes, starting with our houses. So when you go home, be good to your spouse. When you go home, be good to your children. When you go home, be good to your husband. That is what God wants. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So, is it possible really for people to come to the aisle, make their vows, and live happily ever after? Yes. Yes. Even after 20 years? Yes. Even after 25 years, can, still, can they still be happily married? Yes. Even after 30 years, yes, yes, it's possible, it's possible. But then we have to follow the word. We have to follow what God says. If we have to have love, the things that we have to do. I said love is supposed to be there, but we murder it. 
if we do not do the things, if we are rude, we are murdering it. If we are impatient, we are murdering it. And if we are selfish, we are murdering it. We cannot keep loving one another. But if we are polite, man, our homes are going to be like the homes of those two little chickens there. If, can you give me that picture again of the two? If we are polite at home, we will be like this. If we are kind at home, we're going to be like this. If at home, if we are going to be well behaved, we're going to be like this. And if we are very patient, it will be like this all the time. If there is no selfishness at home, we are going to be like this. This is God's will for you. Yes, if you got married the other day, God wants you to be like that. If you've been in your marriage for 50 years, God wants you to be still like that. But you have to do those things. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise, O oh God. We know that God is love. And God, you want us to love one another. Father God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we're going to do away with rudeness in our homes. That we're going to do away with impatience in our relationships. And that we will do away with selfishness, oh God. We want our families to be intact. We want to love one another. We want to stay together. We don't want to divorce, oh God. Your intention is that we live together for those of us who are married. I just pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, that you will help us to stick to what you have said. We thank you. And we bless you. This I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And have a happy Valentine's. so much Reverend Elvis 1 Corinthians 13 5 will stick with us that love is not rude it's kind and patient and we pray that God will bless you and your family even as we look up to you as our role models and that the Lord through the word you've shared today will be able to meditate upon it and the Lord will bless us all thank you very much 
So now I want to know, do we have any first-time visitors in our church today? Anyone who is visiting KAG Buruburu Easter Assembly for the first time? Wow, thank you. Let's give him a hand. Kindly rise up. You can just stand. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you. We have also another lady at the back. Thank you very much. Ushers, kindly reach out to them. Thank you very much for joining us and actually coming on the right day of love. So we pray that God will help us to love you and to, for you even to stay in this church. Thank you very much. And also, if you're online, oh, yes, there's another lady there. Sorry. Thank you very much, Ashes. Kindly reach out to her. And for our online viewers, if there's anyone also who is joining us for the first time, God bless you and thank you so much for tuning in. So, media, do we have announcements? Thank you. Praise the Lord East Assembly. My name is David Watibini and I'll be giving you the announcements for today. Do you want the Lord to deliver you in your times of trouble? Happy is the one who is considerate of the poor. The Lord will save him in a day of adversity. We appreciate all that have been given to the food bank to support those who are suffering among us. If you are yet to partake of this blessing, Every Sunday, we have a basket at the entrance where you can drop your dry food stuff. You can also give via pay bill number 904801. Account number Food Bank. Hashtag East Assembly. I care. We care. Are you a born again believer? Are you passionate about media? Have you trained as a graphic designer, editor, cameraman, social media expert, digital marketer, and IT professional? The East Assembly media team needs you. We have an excellent opportunity for you to use your skill to serve in church. Kindly register at the media team desk after the service. More details to follow. This is our year of visitation. We must seek the Lord while He may be found. We invite you to join us for the only other weekday service we have as a church apart from Sundays. We encourage you to plan your schedule accordingly. Leave work early so as to make it to church by 6 p.m. on Tuesdays for a powerful prayer service. We go up to 7.30 p.m. You will have enough time to get home before curfew hours. See you then. God bless all the royal daughters who have consistently given to support the work of the KG Women's Ministry Countrywide. Your monthly contribution goes a long way in supporting missions. We still need your help. Please remember to renew your Ahadi by giving to pay bill number 904801, account number WWK. Or I give in cash, indicate on the envelope, WWK. Matthew 28, 19. Jesus commanded us to go out and make disciples of all nations. Brethren, let's hear Pastor Joshua's announcement on witnessing. My name is Pastor Joshua, and I come from East Assembly, KAG Buruburu. I'm one of the pastors here that do mission in this church. And I want to encourage you, as pastors, we've been reaching out to our community. We've been going out to uh, Buruburu and Outering and different places to preach the gospel. Every time we've gone out, we've come back with a willing person that wants to give their lives to the Lord or a person that is saying, I will attend East Assembly. I want to encourage you, you who is in church today, we have over seven people so far that have committed to come to church. And we are praying for the 19 that we have been reaching out to, asking the Lord to bless them, asking the Lord to draw them to church. We only are asking for your one hour so that you may go out and witness to someone. Let's be a part of building East Assembly. Let's be a part of the overall vision of growing this church to 20,000 in membership. God bless you and plan to do evangelism. At this time, may the Lord be with you. In Jesus' name. It is time to give. Praise the Lord. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. You can give your offering through our pay bill number 904 
904-801-8801. I repeat that again, 904-801. And on account name, you can choose where your offering will be directed to. It can be tithes, offering, land, food bank, thanksgiving, or missions. God bless you as you give. Those are our announcements for today. From the media team, we wish you a productive and a blessed week ahead. See you on Tuesday at 6 p.m. for our powerful prayer service. At this time, I want to request all our ushers to bring the baskets. They are on the left and the right. Mom, Mom Nancy, we don't have a basket this side. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so at uh, this time, let me allow the choir to give us one song or two. <laughs> one, number. one number. As we give our offering. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord has been faithful. And so we praise his name. steadfast love endures forevermore when i consider the work of your hands your creation and how beautiful you presented it i am left in awe i am left in awe 
you are holy there is no iniquity in you oh God yet you saved me you made me whole and I am left in awe when I think about your love your wondrous love it makes me want to praise it makes me want to shout and rejoice in this name was a wonderful couple. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you, Lewis and Lois and the choir. God bless you, church. I know our service, we are ending actually way, way um, before time. We are supposed to end at 12.30. But our choir is singing so well. May I request that you continue singing so that those of us who still want to hang around, Cindy, oh, as others uh, who have schedules to go can progress and go. So God bless you all. I love you. Um, for all the ladies you've been given flowers, treasure them. When you go with them at home, put them in water. Yeah? Usiache kwa bench. Go with it at home, put in water. Look at it twice, thrice. Paka Tuesday evening, Wednesday. Ndiyo itanza kuwitha. And every day you look at it, tell yourself, I'm a child of God and God loves me more than any other person in this world. Amen. So God bless you. May I uh, invite um, Pastor Joshua to come and give us the benediction. Then choir as we've agreed, you continue singing. Pasi, karibu. God bless you. Okay, I'm going to read some things uh, just before we do the benediction and before we pray. And if you have a husband and if you have a wife, you can try to do a little bit of checklisting and find out whether uh, he loves you so much or he doesn't love you. But it's also, uh, I'm not putting up a fight so that you also go start your fights at home. So I'm going to mention some things here and just maybe by a show of hand, kama mzae, mzae alikukumbuka, kakununulia handbag, you can just do it by a lift of hand and something like that. Are we together? Are we still on Valentine mood? All right. So I'll mention some things. Nani alimbia waifu wake wakati wa Valentine? Who sang to his wife a song, a lovely song? Anyone who was sung for a song by your wife or your husband? Anyone? He was a church. Okay, let me go for another one. Who was called sweetheart? Maybe yesterday or you were called sweetheart today. Wakati uliamka subuhi. Anyone? Okay, I go on with my list. I'm just giving you ideas so that kusichomeke. Sipasia me preach vipoa. And he's reminding us about Valentine. So I want to just mention some things. Before the day end, at least you can do that to her. Who was called beautiful, my beautiful girl, in the morning when they woke up? Anyone? I still go on with the list. There's someone. Yes, who's that? Let's give them a hand. Yes, yes, yes. Let's give her a hand. Yes, yes, yes. Your husband must be 
a very romantic man. And, and that is good. We applaud it. Still more, I want to give you more thought. Anyone who danced with your wife in the morning before you came, you probably went to the dance, uh, put up some uh, Wi-Fi on the speaker and you started dancing with her. Anyone who danced with their wife, their husband? Anyone? Anyone? All right. Dancing is good. Who was bought for a handbag? Kanunuliwa kibeti na hazi. Give yourself a hand. You're doing well. Give yourself a hand. All of you, give yourself a hand. Yes. Yes. I want to come to a close. And maybe you've not bought her jewelry. Maybe you've not bought her something. But at least, remember her. Uh, as I talk like this, there are a few gifts that have been exchanged in our house. And, and I'm thanking God for that. And it's not because we have anything, but it's because I'm just thanking God for that. Now we'll make a prayer and we'll call on the name of the Lord as we thank God for the giving. And the benediction we are going to do today is literally a benediction for a wedding ceremony. And today being a Valentine's Day is a good moment for us to just keep ourselves in sync with God's love. So we'll make a prayer for Pesa, then we'll go for the rest. Father, we thank you. And Father, we bless you this day. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus, for each one of these that have given in the house of the Lord. They've given out of their plenty. They've given out of their uh, times of need. And Father, I pray that none of them will walk out of this place having not received their blessing. You died for us on the cross. You paid the price for us to enjoy love from one another and to one another. And I pray, Lord, that your servants will enjoy love today. They will enjoy love from your throne, together with their families, together with people who are working with them in business, in school, and in different places. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Bless their drink. Bless their bread. Multiply their income. We thank you, and we bless you. I'm going to make this second benediction, and this one has to do uh, with love and it's a benediction uh, with regard to love eternal God with your grace no promise is sure strengthen the men and the women in this sanctuary grant them patience grant them kindness grant them gentleness of spirit and all other gifts of your spirit so that they may fulfill their faithfulness made to each other and also to their daughters at home and sons. Keep them faithful to each other. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all the days of their lives. And all of us say, Amen and Amen. Right. So I'm being reminded about our pastor and that uh, in between the week he left, uh, he uh, went to Mama Pastor's cousin burial. And so he's not together with us because of that. He'll be out for, I think, about two weeks, uh, but then he'll come back. So keep praying for him. Keep committing him to God and wish him a great Valentine. They may be in the midst of crying and sobbing, uh, but just pray for him that he'll be full of love at this time as he interacts with his wife. God bless you. God be with you. Amen.
on solid ground When I think about the Lord How He saved me How He raised me How He filled me With the Holy Ghost How He healed me To the utmost When I think, when I think about So 